Hi everybody, my name is Ryan Kimmel from Double Line Macro Asset Allocation Team. I want to spend the next couple minutes walking you through an uh, update on, on fixed income. Given that bond yields have increased over 100 basis points since June and at the time of recording, 10-year yields are currently at four and three quarters percent, which is at the highest level in over 15 years. We have a lot of investors asking, when will we see a bottom in, in bond yield prices? Now, we believe that the recent rise in bond yields has largely been technically driven as the market has struggled to absorb the surplus of, of treasury issuance, which has introduced a large amount of uh, term premium into the long end of the yield curve. Now, while these technical factors may support interest rates over the very near term, we believe that the fundamental backdrop is changing and could present a much more constructive environment for fixed income in general. We believe that recession risk in the U.S. is elevated and we could see a decline in economic activity over the coming quarters. And we think that inflation will continue to decelerate over the coming months and perhaps could surprise to the downside. You add these together and that paints a pretty constructive environment for bonds and fixed income in general. This first chart in the presentation shows Fed funds rate and 10-year yields and the lead time to recessions, which is the table on the right. And the main takeaway here is that recessions tend to occur eight to 10 months following the peak in Fed funds rate. There were two Fed hiking cycles that I highlighted in yellow in 95 and 94, where recessions didn't immediately follow uh, Fed hikes. Um, but I will highlight that there are you know, one key difference between the current period and those periods, and that is that the yield curve is significantly more inverted during those cycles, in indicating that Fed policy is particularly tight. Next slide, we're showing the loan growth modeled on the share of banks tightening lending standards. And the main takeaway here is that the share of bankers that are tightening lending standards are currently at recessionary levels. And when you model loan growth over the next following four, following four quarters, it's indicating that growth in loans will decline by 7%, which should have a negative impact on economic activity going forward. We've also seen the consumer has benefited tremendously from the massive stimulus payments made during 2020 and, and 2021. The chart on the right here shows accumulated household excess savings. Uh, and what you can see is that households have started to draw down on those savings. And over the coming quarters, these excess savings in aggregate might start to, to run out, which will impact consumption going forward. This next chart shows credit card interest rates and delinquency rates. And you can see we're already starting to see some cracks in the consumer with delinquency rates starting to edge higher. The 30-day delinquency rate is at the highest level going back over 10 years. And it's no, no wonder, given how high credit card interest rates are, and the upper right chart shows the average rate paid on, on credit cards, which over 20%, is the highest level in over 50 years. And we're already starting to see weakness in the consumer based on these, these credit metrics, uh, and that's on the back of a very robust labor market. So it really raises the question, you know, how will the consumer handle a normalization in, in labor? My final chart on the economy, this shows the budget balance inverted in the unemployment rate. And you can see that the budget balance at over 7.4% is the highest level uh, not associated with the recession going back over 50 years. So we've seen this stealthy stimulus uh, being injected into the economy over the last 12 to 24 months. And we believe that we could see a fiscal contraction as tax payments, deferred tax payments are paid, which could impact household disposable income over, over the coming quarters. On the inflation front, we continue to believe that inflation will moderate or normalize back to pre-pandemic uh, levels. You can see on this chart here, this shows uh, underlying inflation as a proxy by the Cleveland Fed's trimmed mean. And I'd pay particularly close attention to the three-month annualized change, which is the blue line, which is showing the, the current run rate of underlying inflation, which remains under 3%. So that, sh that should indicate that the 12-month number should be heading lower over the coming months. Now, if you look at the main components of, of core CPI, the shelter component, core goods, and core services at shelter, 
all the leading indicators are signaling that these three components, at least the price growth, should be heading lower or decelerating over the, over the coming quarters. This chart here shows CPI owner's equivalent rent uh, with a 12-month lag to the Zillow rent index, the red line, and it's signaling that owner, owner, owner's equivalent rent should be heading lower uh, back to pre-pandemic levels over, over the coming months, which is very important given that the shelter component is over 40% of the core CPI basket. Core goods, a great leading indicator for core goods has been the Federal Reserve's uh, Global Supply Chain Pressure Index, which is the, the red line here. And you can see that the supply chain pressures as proxied by this index are even below where we were in the pre-pandemic era, which is signaling that we could see not only disinflationary pressures within the core goods basket, but we could eventually see deflationary pressures, negative month over month changes um, in the months ahead. And finally, the third component, uh, core services, X shelter or super core, which the Fed has been paying particularly close attention to during this cycle. You can see that um, on this chart here, we, we have super core year over year, the black line uh, with a nine month lag along with Atlanta Fed wage growth. You can see they're, they've been very correlated. And an in, a leading indicator that we've been looking at for, for wage growth is the U.S. quit rates, which has been heading materially lower over the last 12 months, and indicating that the upward pressures that we've been seeing from, from heightened wage growth should be dissipating over, over the coming quarters. So when you sum it all together, uh, elevated recession risk, a decline in economic activity, decelerating uh, inflation, that does paint a pretty constructive environment for fixed income. You add to that, it does look like we're near the end of the Fed's hiking cycle. Uh, this chart here shows the change in 10-year yields around the last Fed hike, and we're looking at hiking cycles going back to 1978. And what you see is in the 12 months following the last Fed hike, 10-year uh, yields tend to decline by over 150 basis points. And these next two charts, they basically quantify what I was saying before, that uh, the, given the current macro backdrop, with heightened recession risk and decelerating inflation, we should see 10-year uh, yields head lower. So this chart here shows the, the average six-month change in 10-year yields during periods when core CPI year-over-year -year is increasing or decreasing. I'll focus your attention to the right-hand part of this chart. This shows periods when core CPI is decreasing, and you can see that during these periods, 10-year yields tend to decline and this is based on data going back to 1963, so this does include the, the period where interest rates were rising on a secular basis between 1963 and the early 80s. Similar theme on the next chart here, which shows the change in 10-year yields, the six-month change, and the change in unemployment. Uh, the, I'll focus your attention to the left-hand part of this chart, which shows periods when the unemployment rate is increasing. And you can see that the, uh, that the 10 year yields tend to decline uh, around 65 basis points on average during this, this period. And you know, our base case is we will see a recession and unemployment rate doesn't increase during recessionary periods. On the next chart here, this shows the Bloomberg US aggregate bond index yield to worst and the table shows a scenario analysis of 12 month forward returns based on plus or minus 100 basis point yield change. And the main takeaway here is that the risk reward for fixed income right now is, is much more attractive than relative to we were, say, a couple years ago. The current yield at 5.6% creates pretty adequate buffer to absorb an uh, increase in, in, in interest rates. If yields rise over uh, 6%, which would be the highest level going back over 20 years, you would still have a positive 12 month return. Uh, vice versa, if yields declined 100 basis points, which wouldn't be unusual during recessionary periods, you could see 12-month returns of uh, near 12%. Now, we are seeing uh, some areas of uh, particular interest within the space. Um, agency mortgages look particularly attractive uh, given current spreads. This chart shows agency MBS spreads overlaid with interest rate volatility, the, the red line. Um, and they tend to be very, very correlated. And given the backdrop of, uh, you know, reduced inflationary pe pressure um, with that, you know, the tail risk of higher inflation um, subsiding, 
that should lead to lower uh, interest rate volatility, which should lead to uh, a tightening in mortgage spreads going forward. And my last chart here, this shows the yields on AAA and triple B CLOs. And you can see that uh, yields on the AAA are over 6%, um, which is very attractive considering that these securities have very minimal uh, credit risk. Uh, these are floating rate instruments, so they should do uh, very well in an environment where the Fed is higher for, for longer. For investors that are willing to move further out the risk spectrum, we have triple B CLOs. You can see the yield here, uh, the blue line, which a yield of over 9%. Um, for us, that looks very attractive as well, um, especially when you consider that there is uh, ample uh, credit protection on, on these instruments as, as well. So just to sum it up, given the backdrop of heightened recession risk in the U.S. and abroad, decelerating inflation in the U.S. with potential for downside surprises in, in core inflation data, you have the Fed near the end of its hiking cycle, this generally paints a pretty constructive environment for, for fixed income. With that, I'd like to thank you. I hope you found this presentation helpful. If you have more questions, you can email us at info at doubleline.com.